Welcome back, Zero K fans. This is Shadow Fury 33 with another exhibition match. This time it is going to be Chesty and Senek on Cold Snap. Snap, if you watched the 2v2 tournament that we had about three weeks ago, you'll recognize this map. This is the map that was a very long Norm Flipstep match. Like Norman Flipstep versus, I think. I want to say Kloon and. I can't remember who it was actually offhand. I'm sorry, I really should, because it was a really good match. It was like, I think, 50 minutes long or something. It was... It was quite the long match. Where was it? Princey and Clone. That's who it was. Yeah, Princey and Clone played on this map. It was an hour long. This game is going to be shorter. Don't worry. It's shorter. It's not an hour. But it is... This is also a 1v1, not a 2v2. So this map, for those of you who don't recognize it, is a more team-oriented map. It's also very, very cliff-oriented. So you have potential start points at the, well, along the edges, typically either the top or the bottom. Like, center can be taken too, it's a little bit trickier to hold. In a team match, it's much more common to take this as well, like have one of the players take this or take up here, and then defend this lane. Because you basically have the approach along the south, the approach along the center, and the approach along the north. Now the approach along the north, as is pretty clear, is probably the most defensible. The approach along the center is a small choke point, so only a couple lotuses are required but you don't have quite the same defensibility throughout the approach area. And the approach along the south is a wide open lake. Wide open frozen lake, and no, you actually don't get water below it. That'd be kind of cool if they did, but this map does not have water on it at all. So you don't get water below the lake if you break it. It just it just pits down. I just don't think you do. No, there's no water on this map. Which is kind of unfortunate, because that... I don't recall there being water. It did get pitted a lot in that hour-long game. Anyway, it's also not an area you can actually get any economy. The center and north, as you can see, you can. The center in particular, you can. But the south area is a giant wide open space. Pretty much just for fighting. So essentially, this map, you can have boss in the north and vehicles in the south. And a mix in the center. Which provides for some interesting setups. I haven't seen it much in 1v1, though, so this will be an interesting game. Rather educational. Let's begin. So Chesty in the eastern side of the map, going for Cloakybot Factory. Sanic, the western side of the map, has yet to choose their factory. Not quite sure what's happening. Oh, I see. They were just typing. A bit surprised they didn't use the pre-game. You do have time in the pre-game to set up. I'm not sure how recently Sanic has played, though. Anyway, Chesty is going for more of an economic opening. No surprises there. This is a fairly large map, so getting away with that isn't too hard. Sanic, on the other hand... Okay. They probably should have paused in this case. Regardless, going for vehicles... So they're going to be attacking along the south, probably. Chesty likely to attack along the center of the map, I'm guessing. I'm not totally sure. They might attack along the south as well. But I think they're going to attack mid. I mean, for one thing... Oh, no, they're actually... They are going south. I was just thinking they're going to go for mid, because if they go for mid, they can easily go north or south from there to figure out where their opponent is. But nope, they are going due south. Along the lake. Well, of course, Sanic would do that, because Sanic is on vehicles. The lake is the perfect... The lake is where Sanic wants to go. It's a bit predictable, but that is also the best position for fights for the vehicle factory. Jesty, Not sure what they're thinking here, but I think they don't know what Sanic is going for. They might expect Sanic is going for Cloakybot and Chesty... Are they going to see it? I want... This is getting annoying. Okay, so Sanic does see Chesty coming in and does see that one unit. Doesn't know what it is, and it is now revealed is the Glaive. So Sanic knows that... Nope, it's not revealed yet. Not in vision yet. Come on. Okay, it is an it is unknown. While Sanic, on the other hand, they have been spotted out. I think is it known? It is now known. Sanic knows. Sorry, Chesty and Sanic know each other. They know exactly what the other one's doing. And Sanic is losing a couple scorchers for basically free. Yeah, I mean one Lotus. Otherwise, that's still reclaim. That's a lot of reclaim. Well, 150, but for what they lost, which was one Lotus, that's worth it. That paid for itself. So, Chesty thanks you, Sanic, for a donation of metal. However, this is, I mean, this is early game. It's kind of important. I was going to say, however, this is the early game, so it doesn't matter that much. No, it actually matters a great deal. That's, that's actually really important. That was a big 24 metal. It was plus 24 for a few seconds. Big boost. That Lotus is now free. They can build another three, another glaive, I think. Another one glaive for free with that reclaim. 
Sanic, on the other hand, building up, going to the north, putting their commander in a great spot. They're going to make sure that they can't easily be attacked from the north. Their commander should have... Nope, it's not upgraded. Never mind. I was going to say it should be upgraded, but no, it is not. However, it is still in the way. And I should also be switching around so that you see red on red. I've got to change that at some point. Anyway, or someone has to change that at some point. I have an option for team-based colors. Now, as I was saying, Jesse... Well, they can't attack from the north, but they can certainly attack from the south. Sanic probably was expecting either to be attacked from the north or just... They're doing the standard good play. You move your commander forward, you keep your workers back. It's just that there's a lot of forward on this map. There are a lot of front lines. And Leveler's coming in. Great choice. Earlier than usual, but that's exactly what's ne that is necessary at this point. Sanic needs those Levelers. And even with the Levelers, those Glaives are going to still wreak havoc. This one Lotus should probably go down. Nope, never mind. The Glaive is not focusing on it. It will take out the mechs. It will die. And that will be it. Still, that was a huge amount of damage. I mean, that... Well, Sanic has a decent amount of reclaim to work with right now. They have about 300 metal reclaim. So they are going to be able to rebuild. But they still did lose some economy for a little while. And now to the north, there's no defenses here. Completely free kills. Mad looks... Oh, this, this glaive is too close. Okay, it didn't die, but that was... That was risky. That's a better position. Metal extractors do damage when they explode. Not much, but they do some, and that glaive is now going to die. A little bit sucks, but it's fine. There are enough glaives coming in. Chesty is slightly ahead. They are very ahead economically, though. That harassment actually did manage to pull them ahead. 22 to 12, or plus 22 to plus 12 on metal. And they both have the energy to maintain it. So Sanic right now, they are desperately trying to rebuild their metal extractors. They are still behind. Well, Chesty, they've been continuously building after and as they've been harassing. Surprisingly going for the south side, though. I'm a bit surprised they're expanding along there rather than expanding to the north. Not totally, though. I can understand the logic. I mean, it's a bit awkward, but I could see they might be thinking, if I go to the north, Sanic has faster units. They can more easily harass there than I can defend. That being said, Sanic is right here. So, I'm not sure how much that logic really holds. Sanic is right there, can go along the lake at the bottom, and that lake at the bottom is much more conducive to vehicle play than this little hilly and building-filled area at the top. I mean, this area is... Just look at how hilly that is. Like, it's it's kind of tough for vehicles to get around there. As you can see, this leveler is... It's not too much lower. I think, actually, can I... Let me go on the path in front of you. So right here we see that the leveler is... Okay, pretty much able to go anywhere. So yes, that logic actually would make sense. If that is what Sanic is thinking, that is a perfectly valid thing to think. Sorry, if that's what Chesty is thinking, then yeah, that is that makes perfect sense. Because they don't want to risk that. So yeah, this is definitely the lesser of two evils. To, to expand over onto the lake, rather than expanding over into the power plant. That being said, the center is still kind of closer. And Chesty does have a decent position on that. This is what I mean, though. Sanic coming into the south, and Chesty has no defenses here. So these metal extractors are going to go down for free. All of Chesty's forces in the center... Yet, all of their economies at the south, and there is a completely wide... Wow, this is a very, very big window that Sanic can use. And the door has been left wide open. Chesty, they are pulling in their Rockos and their Glaives. They're probably going to be able to defend this, but they're going to lose a Metal Extractor or two, even still. Okay, well, they lost just one. Sanic... Sanic, well, they're checking the center, and that's not going to find anything. Chesty has not built in the center at all. They haven't defended the center, they haven't set up defenses here, and the levelers, they're actually attacking the north. Chesty did in fact go for the north, and we are seeing exactly what I was talking about. Sanic has an easier time setting up here than Chesty has defending. Well, okay, not really, because that's not Scorchers, but with the Scorchers they do, actually. The Scorchers can. The levelers, no, the levelers are too slow, but the Scorchers are fast enough. That can work. So right now, Sanic, down a couple more metal extractors, still ahead economically, on par militarily. And threaten the commander. Is that going to force Chesty back? I, Sorry, is that going to force Sanic back? Because Sanic looks like they're just going for a base swap at this point. I remember a base swap, but they're just... They're going for an all-out assault right now. They don't care. Their commander might go down, but that's not their... Actually, they're not even caring about that. Chesty's not even focusing on that. Chesty's focused entirely on their base. Very much... Seriously, those camera bugs need to be fixed in the engine. Stupid new interpolation setup. Doesn't matter, though. Sanic does get rid of Chesty's factory. So right now, Chesty has no production potential. They do have those Roccos, but they didn't use them at the same time that they were being attacked. So right now, Sanic has all the opportunity to go back here and refocus. 
got their commander out of the way, and they're going to have units. Scorchers and level... Well, leveler's not a big deal, but Scorchers are a big deal. Going to tear apart these Rockos, that is not going to work out too well. Sorry, Chesty. That Rocco attack could have happened when you're... Like, if that attacked while they were being attacked, then yeah, Chesty could have dealt a lot of damage. Now, Chesty, however, doing a nice surround here. I see the value here. I mean, Sandy's commander is totally safe. There's no way of getting to that. But the rest of the front line, yeah, it's a little bit threatened. Chesty is ahead economically. They've rebuilt... They've got an air factory. They haven't rebuilt, but they are building another factory. They probably should get another ground factory, though. Not sure about Cloaky. If they're more comfortable with Cloaky, then maybe. It is working okay. I just... Yeah, okay. I guess with the Rockos, it is working okay. So if they want to rebuild Cloaky, that would be sensible enough. And they are, indeed, rebuilding Cloaky. Just about the same place they had it before. And attack in the north. Well, Sanic has been losing a lot to the north. Hasn't been expanding much to the north. Chesty, on the other hand, has not been re-expanding much. They do have a lot of economy, but a lot of that is reclaim. And they're running a bit low on that. Or actually, no. No, it's not. No, despite my previous assertion, their economy is not just reclaim. Looks like a fair amount of overdrive on top of that as well. Yeah, these are plus 4.3. These are nearly doubled. So, no, it's not much reclaim at all. That's, that's a stable 38. That is good. That is powerful. And down goes Sanix Factory. Down possibly goes... Well, Sanix Commander being threatened, but the factory was a much bigger deal. Getting rid of the factory is going to cause a lot more headache. And nice use of darts here. Sanix switching over to darts to get rid of the Rockos. That is exactly the right choice. I mean, yeah, the Scorchers do a decent amount of damage, but the darts are much harder to hit. The Scorchers are at least something that can be hit more easily. They have less mobility. They can get... They just tend to drive into the rockets. Darts, not so much. So good to see. Good use of darts there, Sanic. It's always good to remember all your options when you, that you have. Now, that being said, Sanic is actually getting back ahead. I shouldn't say that being said, Chesty is not really remembering those options themselves. I mean, the Glaives do well against the darts. The Ravens apparently do terribly against the Levelers. Even with the dive, the Levelers can easily move out of the way, or relatively easily move out of the way. Just now, I mean, that was the entire set. That could have killed the commander if they wanted to get rid of the commander. That could have killed... Actually, that's a lot of build power if they did. That could have gotten rid of the caretakers. That could have gotten rid of this new air factory, which Chesty does not know about. And Zanuck would have... Well, they would have lost the air control they're about to get. Because Zanuck is about to get a bunch of air control. They are getting swifts. They have three so far. Well, two, one in production. I mean... There's a lot of air building force. There's a lot of air production. There's a lot of air support. Sanic is going to have to deal with this. It's not going to be hard. It's just that Chesty could switch over to Hawks and Swifts, and they'd have much more of an army. They'd very quickly gain air control if they went for it. As long as they're careful. I mean, if they, especially if they don't lose these Ravens, that will be quite useful. The only problem, of course, being that they went for Air Factory right after that attack. They don't really have much to deal with things like darts, which... That just takes a lot of time. Chesty is expanding to the north while darts coming in to try to deal with that. There is a Lotus, three seconds, one second, and that is done. That will get rid of the darts, no problem. I mean, darts are a bit of a pain, as I've mentioned before. Darts are about half, well, without the Gauss penetration property, they are about half of a dagger. And now we see that this area is getting defended pretty well. Like I said, it's a fairly defensible area, this particular center spot. So that should hopefully stop Sanic from getting in. Chesty, however, is still ahead economically. And Sanic still has a leveler up north. But Chesty is ahead economically, has... Wow. 18 Ravens. Sorry. 17, 1 in production. But coming up against the same number of Swifts, and the Ravens are not being used to attack directly. If they attack the main base, yeah, there is that Hacksaw. That's it. That is the only anti-air defense there is. Except for the Swifts, which are now going to lock down the entire air factory as Chesty desperately tries to build up some anti-air having not really built much other than a few defenders beforehand. 19 Swifts. And the remaining... Wow, the remaining bombers coming back. the commander? Nope, that's Light Beagle Factory. Looks like the commander is still very much alive, not been threatened at all. Most of the bombers did survive that. We still have about 12 bombers on Sanic. And Swifts just scouting around, seeing what's going on. Not really losing any of their number... The rock... Okay, defenders are a threat. The Lotus is not so much. The Lotus is going to go down pretty quick as the Swifts take them out. How many Swifts are coming in? I mean, at this point... 
No, Chesty has none. Chesty has basically no Swifts. They're building up as quickly as they can, but they're splitting their power between... They're splitting build power between air and ground, and they need to get rid of that air. They need to get air control back. They, need, they want to use those Ravens. They've invested... How much money have they invested in Ravens, anyway? Okay, this is 4,200 alone. They've invested about 6,000 total into Ravens. That is their entire military advantage. That is currently... Like, ignore this number, because the military advantage difference... That's this set of Ravens, which is completely useless. Almost exactly that set of Ravens. 4,200 metal. That is a lot of Ravens. That's a lot of military spending that is completely useless right now. Now, at the same time, Sanic going for a shield bot factory up north. They're not rebuilding light vehicles. They're going entirely for shields. And as we see, there are a few... I mean, still some Swifts coming in. Chesty not really able to maintain air control. If that Razor gets done, that's going to be a big deal. And it looks like the... Yeah, the Swifts are getting distracted enough. Sanic's Swifts are being distracted long enough to allow this Razor to be constructed. One second left, and up goes the Razor. Just barely, thanks to a hero's second Rector. That second Rector is the only reason that particular Razor is up. If it weren't for that, that Razor would have gone down. Would have been just 99% complete. That would have been it. But nope. Gets fully complete. However, the center is completely undefended. The south is undefended. There are, however, many Zeus's, which are going to have a very hard time with this. They really can't do anything. They can hit a few if they get lucky, but that's about it. The Ravens, not so much. The Ravens are a bit of a different story. But why are the Ravens moving forward? Chesty, unless you're going to go for a suicide attack to try to take out the air factory, or try to take out, I suppose... No, take out the air factory. The commander isn't that relevant. Well, the shield factory, the air factory, and the commander. I think there are enough Ravens to take out all three of those. Not well, a dozen Ravens? Yeah, you put four on the commander. You put, well, six on each factory. But no, they are dying. They are dying way too fast. Why... Keep the Ravens back, Chesty. What are you doing? You can't use them. And now the military advantage is turning, although I'm a bit surprised. Like, on the one hand, yeah, you can't use them, but on the other hand, move forward with the Zeus! Because the Zeus, yeah, the Swifts will attack them, but that means that your Ravens aren't being attacked. You could then pressure by having the Zeus attack, so the Ravens and the Ravens and Swifts are trying to deal with the Zeuses. And then, to the north, you'd have the Ravens attacking other stuff, but no, now Sanic is coming into the Shieldbot factory, having not been sufficiently scouted. I think Chesty got a little bit tunnel visioned on the south side of the map. They're trying to play Icy Run on this particular side of the map, and this particular section of the map. Not really worrying enough about the north side. They did build this Razor, but for the most part, they've been just playing on this one lake. That's been it. And no, there is no water. I was right. That doesn't pit down to water. I mean, you can tell. It's, it would be on the edge of the map otherwise. So now we're down to half a dozen Ravens. And at this point, the north side's getting destroyed. The south side's rather difficult to punch, but really, they can just punch through the north, down from the northeast, going south in the main base, and Chesty is going to lose. Chesty has not focused any attention. I'm just surprised that Chesty is not just trying to put pressure. But they're not pressuring this out. They know that the south side is entirely Ravens and Swifts, which aren't going to do that much damage quickly to Zeus. Like, when you have this many Zeus, there's like nine Zeus, four, yeah. Nine Zeus? That's about 20,000 health worth of Zeus. The Swifts will not tear through that in any decent amount of time. The Ravens, it takes three Ravens for a single Zeus to go down. And the Ravens can be hit pretty easily by the Lightning Guns. So overall, I really don't understand what the rationale is there. And it looks like air control has kind of been restored for Chesty, but... Sanic is all over the north side. Chesty has no way of dealing with this. Does Chesty even know? No, Chesty has no radar up there. Chesty has no idea. And at this point, now Chesty knows, having just built Radar right where they needed to, and now they realize, oh crap. Oh crap, everything's here. Why are the Swifts moving back? Okay, I guess they're trying to defend, but there's a bunch of Vandals there. That's all they have. Wow, that is all they have for defense. While attacking the... Just, well, okay, it's way too late. Well, not way too late, but it's going to be very difficult to attack now. They had a great chance about five minutes ago, but now it's just too late. The Swifts, however, are doing a decent job taking out the North, but not harassing this factory. If they got air control back, they could destroy that factory, taking apart the shield, and they'd stop this tide of shield bots. They'd stem it completely. And the thing is, is that there aren't many shield bots left. There's like half a dozen between the, well, the vandals and the bandits, but half a dozen bandits, three or four vandals. That would be fairly easy to destroy. It looks like Chesty is trying to attack through the center, from the center, going west, south, like going like this. Looks like that's what they're going to be trying to do. That should actually work pretty well. That is a good direction to attack from. 
And Sanic trying to get back their air control. It looks like they are going to lose it. They're attacking over Sanic's territory, losing most of their Swifts. And the Vandals are going to be a bit of a pain, but there are still too many Swifts for Chesty. Sanic losing their air control. Chesty, unfortunately, not, not going. Like, they did not set up Q orders all the way through here. So they are not attacking. These units are remaining idle when they really shouldn't. That is annoying. It's not, like I said, they can just, they can auto-attack. They can just attack, or just move. Queue a bunch of moves. Like, why is Chesty not queuing? I'm noticing that, actually. Chesty is not queuing their line moves. They're doing line move after line move, but they aren't queuing them. I'm sure they know they can. I'm just surprised they aren't. It's a very strange style of play. And it meant that their units were idle. I mean, these units were idle. They could come in when they were, when it was weaker. Like, right as, right before Sandy started totally rebuilding the Shieldbot factory here. They could have dealt a lot of damage, and yet they haven't. I mean, they still are, but now the Stardust gets up. The two Stardusts get up. The commander's in the way. Like, if that attacked about a minute or, or, well, 30 seconds earlier, which it would have had them not be idle, that that would have worked. Nice snipe on the Roach, though, but more Roaches coming in. Xanic desperate to try to get rid of all these forces, and it looks like that is going... Is that going to work? It actually looks like it will. Yeah, it looks like these Zeus will be able to get through this. The Stardusts go down. The commander in a very risky position. As for the rest of the map, there is... Well, there's that one Vandal, but it's not a big deal. Sanic has a decent idea of what's going on in Chesty's base, but Chesty is able to break apart Sanic's commander, or very nearly break it apart. The more important thing is the Shieldbot factory. Oh, wow. Taking to the Roaches inside the factory. Do that a few more times, and you have that factory dead. But they're focusing on the commander, which is not the point of focus. That is not the most threatening thing right now. Another Roach goes down, however. Digging the factory into an even deeper hole, too. Okay, Sanix Commander goes down to Zeus. They need to refocus on that factory, and they are doing so. Down it goes. Shieldbot factory is down. Chesty in a pretty good position. Sanic right now, they are trying to regain air control, but they are not able to do so. However, Sanic does have this north side. They do have an economic advantage. They have a massive military disadvantage, but they have an economic advantage. Chesty not attacking to the north, not sending any glaze up there, not sending like a Zeus or two up there, just to double check. Nor are they attacking south to try to complete the assault. Like, Chesty, if you're watching this, the one thing I would say is click on the minimap to get, uh, assuming you're using the setting that allows you to click on the minimap to move around. By default, I think it's click to set orders, or click to select. If you have this, use this to jump around. And control groups are also really good if you're not using those, like double tapping control groups. And Q line moves. Always, always queue line moves. They are going to the north, but it's just... There have been a lot of times units have been idle when they could have been queued out. And all the ravens going to the north. A little surprising there. Also, by the way, I'm going to just point out a little trick. When you're using ravens, one thing you can do, actually, is you can basically attack, right-click, attack, right-click, attack, right-click. Like, anytime you want to do a split like that, you just... I mean, you don't have to do it that quickly, because 0k isn't super fast, but that's... It's, a, it's an old StarCraft trick. Just... F or A click, right click, or A click, right click, A click, right click. You get you get s splits for basically free. You can do it faster. I'm doing it a bit more slowly for demonstration purposes, but you can do it a bit faster, and it doesn't really matter. You usually will have it done in time, and the Ravens will split nicely, tearing apart everything. It's just a good trick to note. Now Chesty once again not attacking, not attacking in the south. Why are they? I mean. At this point, yeah, okay, send a few glaives to scout around, see what's going on. That's exactly what they're doing. Sending them to the north, sending them entirely to the north, sending nothing to the south to figure out what's going on. Why are they not attacking? These Zeus and Rockos would be well positioned to tear this apart. I mean, send a few, like, send one or two glaives to scout it out. At this stage in the game, the reclaim gained by one or two glaives is not a big deal. Unlike at the beginning of the game where I mentioned that it was a big deal, right now it's not. One or two glaives sacrificed for information is extremely valuable because of the information. And also, from the Omniscient perspective that I currently am privileged to have, there are many... there are no defenses. All the defenses are along the lakeside. There are no defenses from the north. So the Glaze would be able to get in for free, and they are kind of starting to move in. Sanic behind economically. They have not built another factory. Chesty has gone for a Shieldbot factory of their own. Starting that up, looks like they're going for... are they going for a Convict Felon Ball? Just Convict so far. But a Convict Fell Ball looks likely. Why are the Glaze moving back? Swifts aren't that much of a threat. Like, not for that many Glaze. 34 Glaze, you can just move in. 
You can probably tear apart the Swifts as it is. And of course, the remaining Swifts come in. Chesty move in. If Chesty moves in right now, they will not necessarily win. The Stardust will get in the way. But they'll have a pretty good chance, especially if they move in, spot the Stardust, pull back slightly, run in with Ravens, bomb the Stardust out. The Stardust only take two bombs to kill. Bomb the Stardust out, and then from there, because at this point, they have air control. Like, Chesty has total air control, and they are, in fact, getting rid of that Stardust, which is exactly what they need to do. Very well done. Moving with the Glaives, and then from here, that should be a win. The only weakness, the only weak point is this south side. Stuff can get out of the south side without being spotted, without being scouted, without easily being defended against, because Chesty has nothing posi- or, well, one Zeus position there, but that's not going to see enough. Like, seriously, that's tiny vision range. But it looks like Chesty is in a great position there, just about to take this, and... Well, get rid of that. Sanic throws in the towel. GG, that is game. Well, I was... Chesty did take it. Ultimately, Chesty took it, but still... Q line move orders are your friend. Very much so are your friend. It is extremely important because... It's easy for units to get idle. If you queue them out, you can just have them go. They'll do something sensible. Go do something else, and then come back. And especially if you get really comfortable with it, you can kind of jump around at the minimap, keeping an eye on the minimap, like keeping one eye on the minimap and one eye on the main map, and then jumping back and forth between them. So you can go to the main map, you do something here, well, you go to the minimap, see something's open your base, start defending that, go to the minimap, go to the other side of the main map, defend stuff here, or attack here. So attack and defense at the same time, that sort of thing. If you can pull that off, that sort of multitasking is extremely powerful. I've been trying to work on it myself, it's something I used to be able to do better when I was playing StarCraft more, and now I've... That's been years. That was years ago. But I'm trying to get back into it. Not StarCraft so much as multitasking properly. Although Starbo is pretty good. Regardless, I think I can have another game. I think this time for another match. I didn't actually pick out a replay because I wasn't totally sure. But let's see what there is. If anyone has a request, let me know. Okay, Anarchid pointing out that control area attack is a split. The thing with control area attack, it is a split, that is true. The one problem though is that you can't say attack all metal extractors, or attack some metal extractors, some lotuses, and if some factories or something like that. You can't split it out that granularly, because what ends up happening is the ravens just split on everything in the area. So when you're going against a bunch of moving units, it's a great idea, because what ends up happening is it just splits evenly a bunch of these slow moving units, tears them apart. But against a bunch of buildings where you only want to hit a few of them, it's probably easier to do the F-click, right-click thing. Or A-click, right-click. I haven't had F for attack, because I like A for attack move. For fight. It's weird like that. Anyway. Going to have another one, which... Well, it looks like those one played a couple hours ago. Oh. Okay, I'm going to have one between Tanstiger and Kane on Bandit Planes that was just played about two hours ago. So stay tuned for that. It will be up in just a moment. <laughs> 